What's going on YouTube? Thanks for joining me on my new channel that I just created. Just going to be separate from my main channel. My main channel, if you didn't watch that video, is basically focused on vlogs and tech and stuff. So daily life kind of things. And if you're interested in watching vlogs, go ahead and subscribe to that channel. I'll make sure I'll leave a link for it down below in the description. But for now, this channel is going to be solely dedicated to gaming. More importantly, Pokemon whenever I get the chance to. But I'll probably mostly be uploading mobile game videos that I'll be recording on my phone since those are the easiest videos for me to record. Until Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee comes out, I'll be playing Let's Go Pikachu. And... I'll be trying to figure out a way to record that and get that on here on YouTube as well. So wish me luck on figuring that out. Anyways, this video is going to be about some new information or new videos that came out for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And the easiest way for me to find it was through Cerebi, which they uploaded 16 hours ago, as you can tell. So let's get started on this, shall we? And since I have zero subscribers at the moment, zero views, I'm not too worried about copyright infringement and such. I don't think Nintendo will actually like give me a strike on my channel for watching their stuff or viewing their stuff or showing their stuff. So, and I'm not exactly getting any kind of ad revenue. So at this point in time, I really don't care about their little strikes or whatnot. So we're gonna be watching these videos in full from start to finish so now let's first start off with this venusaur thing there's been a lot of talk about this venusaur thing and how it jumps like a frog from my understanding a lot of people are upset about it or making jokes about it memes about it and so let's see what the whole hubbub is about okay so it's hopping like a frog I mean, it's fine. I don't see the problem with it. Honestly, it's a frog. I'd imagine that he's hopping around like that. And he's probably happy. All right. I don't know what happened just now. All right, so now let's get started with this next video. It looks like it's an electrode following. Hold up. Let's restart that. I mean, it looks fine to me. It's, I have to say, though, it's awesome that they're bringing back following Pokemon again. Makes me real happy. Alright, so I don't know what the heck's going on on my screen right now. There we go. Now it's back to normal. So, yeah, I've been, like, hoping that the Pokemon Company would bring back, or Game Freak or whatever... Uh, would bring back the following Pokemon feature that was introduced in Pokemon Yellow and then reintroduced again in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. That was like one of my favorite features of all time in Pokemon. Let's see. And we've already seen Onyx in one of the previous gameplay videos. What it's like to ride them, so it's nothing new, I don't think. Yeah, nothing new. And I haven't really noticed anything else new. Oh, you can still talk to him. Interesting. I was wondering if you'd be able to talk to him. But yeah, you can still talk to him even when you're riding on him. So that's cool. You'll still be able to talk to riding Pokemon like Arcanine and such. Alright, so now... Looks like Caterpie is in this one. And you're leaving Caterpie behind. It's pretty cute looking at Caterpie trying to follow funny that it's like not keeping up or anything well, that's pretty cute so i wonder what happens when it gets off screen and that just answered my question they responded right next to you all right and then i don't know what this video is about let's see oh golem in diglett cave let me restart that so you can see zubat in the background I don't remember there being Zubat in a Diglett cave. 
I just remember a ton of Diglets in here. But I don't really remember Zubats being in there, so that was interesting. And then obviously some Doug Trio. Okay, so nothing new. But I do want to bring the attention back to this Zubat. You see that Zubat up there? Interesting. I really don't remember Zubats being in this cave. Hmm. I could be wrong. Let's see. Oops, if I can spell right. Pokemon, Fire Red, Big Lake, Cave. Alright, so let's see. Yeah, there was never any Zubat in there, so that's interesting that they changed that up. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. So that definitely goes to show that they are changing it. Got this spinning ball. That they're changing what kind of Pokemon are found in different areas. For sure. After you saw that obvious Zubat in Diglett Cave. Ooh, my Mac is really struggling. And that's just some other stuff. So now, there's also this video of some famous YouTuber in Japan that was invited, invited out to Pokemon HQ to check out the new Pokemon games. So that's pretty interesting. Let's get started. And I don't know what he's saying. I don't know if you do. But I got Let's Go Eevee in there. <laughs> Alright, I don't really care about talking. So, Pikachu and Eevee are meeting him there. And then this is the part where I've seen a lot of people talking about as well. Where it's been confirmed that Pixelpar, if you haven't heard of him, where this dude named Pixelpar was giving out a lot of leaks of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee in the past and he called it Project Beluga. A lot of people were doubting him on it and a lot of people were calling him fake and all this other stuff. I can't find his tweets. They're so long ago. But people were, were just hammering him on, on the leaks that he'd give out. And a lot of people didn't believe him. I kind of had a feeling that he might have been telling the truth. But I felt like that might have been just hopeful wishes that he was telling the truth on things. And part of me was a little skeptical about it. Especially when he created a bet for himself that he ended up losing. Where in the bet it was said, or that he said, that if they didn't release any new information by a certain date, that he'd start drawing all of his tweets from then on for a, a while. And he ended up losing that bet. So that made me kind of question how legit he was with his leaks. But then somebody else talked about it and was thinking, like conspiracy-wise, that he did that on purpose so he can give out information through tweets and just tease us and mess with us and whatnot. So I don't know if I'm going to find this stuff. It's been so long. Anyways, I give up. But Pixelpar called it Project Beluga, which ended up being the actual name, if you could see up here somewhere. I can't see it. Um, I'm sure a lot of other people can. But it ended up being called Project Beluga. So that's kind of cool. They're showing off the animation of the Pikachu. And the ears. It's pretty cute. I'm going for the Pikachu version, and one of my best friends, she's going for the Eevee version. As so you can see, Eevee with a bucket on its head. It's pretty cute. She's going for the Eevee version, so we'll be trading some Pokemans across. I'm actually kind of excited that the new Pokemon games are going to have only the original 150. 
Because that'll make it easier to complete the Pokedex in that game and see what special thing happens. Because I've never been able to finish the Pokedex in any Pokemon game that I played. At least not capitalized. So that's cool. You can see the room for the first time. See the Nintendo Switch, the Pikachu doll over there. It's a pretty cool room. That's a big TV. Probably, I think it's bigger than the TV I own. Yeah, you can just enjoy it. Looks like he's cuddling with the Eevee tail. Updated PC in the corner. And then a rival. Now, they say that he's going to be a friendly rival, but it's weird that his eyes, if you notice in the earlier videos, his eyes are definitely different than that, which makes me wonder if he's only going to be friendly in front of other people. And when it's just you two by yourselves, he kind of brings out his inner, like, hidden side of being more of an aggressive and competitive rival than he leads on. Or that game freak had led on. So that's just kind of an interesting look. Yep. You see... Pallet Town. It's pretty cool. Two story houses. Pretty cool. And then this guy. So, what I've also heard in one of the other videos of other PokéTubers is that when they try to talk to people around town, that the people there at E3 were telling them not to look around or talk to other people and just continue on to Viridian Forest and ignore everybody. Oh, look like at Pikachu. Ah, oh, Pikachu's so cute. So I guess we have to catch Pikachu. Which is interesting because in Pokemon Yellow, Professor Oak is the one that catches Pikachu. So I guess this time we do it. Unless we missed like a little cutscene that's showing Professor Oak being the one to catch it. Oh, look at those graphics. I have to say, I know a lot of people were like bagging on the new graphics in this game, saying how crappy they look, but look at that. Oh, that makes me so excited. It's like... Uh, for the people that grew up with these games, this is like how we imagined things back in the day when the games first came out. The level of graphics, the level of detail, the way that things look, and the Pokeball being right there, and us actually reaching out to grab our Pokeball with our Pokemon in it. Like back in the old games, when you, you just like pressed A and it's just a text bubble saying that you get, you picked up your Pokemon. But here, we're actually reaching out and picking it up. Which is like, ah, uh, this, this is really stirring up some emotions for me. Everybody looks all surprised and stuff. Uh, and Pikachu. Man. <laughs> yeah, the man, that's the same reactions I'm having. Oh, uh, this is... My nostalgia is killing me. Uh, uh, that, that like touches me, man. Actually reaching out to grab a Pokemon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like this video too. Oh man, that just touched me. I'm sorry guys, I gotta go back and see that again. Like, like this is my imagination of like 12 or 11 year old me. I can't remember how old I was. It's like my imagination personified. And it's all sniffing you. Ah, oh, that's cute. And it likes you. <laughs> Unlike in, uh, in the beginning of Yellow, when Pikachu doesn't like you like at all. This one seems to like you from the start, which is cool. Oh, that just touches me, man. Alright, so anything new? See a trainer over there. That's cool. So, another thing that I've mentioned in one of my previous videos that I haven't seen anybody talking about 
in terms of the trainers, is that you can apparently rebattle trainers in this game. So, instead of relying solely on the capture mechanic to get experience for your Pokemon, you can actually rebattle trainers, which is something that I have to say really relieves me. It makes it more okay for me that there's no more wild battles because I can rebattle trainers. My only hope for that, though, is that when we rebattle these trainers, that the trainers also get stronger, potentially have their Pokemon involved as well, and make the battles like more not interesting, but makes the battles. Makes the battle seem more alive. I hope you guys can hear me the same time. No, it looks like Pikachu caught something. Or not caught something, but found something. But yeah, it's really interesting because rebound trainers definitely makes the capture for experience thing less harsh for me. Because I was one of those people that really didn't like that they were taking out wild battles. But, oh look, Team Rocket's over there. Huh, two markets just waiting for you over there. Yeah, I really didn't like that they were taking out wild battles. I wonder what that last Pokeball is in that Pokeball. So, I'd be really happy with rebounding trainers. And I got this information from watching one of Blunty's videos. I don't know if you've heard of that YouTuber by the name of Blunty. But he was talking about his experience with the games and how he found out that you can rebattle trainers, but unfortunately his guide there couldn't tell him how often you can rebattle them or if there's a cooldown or anything really. So look at that devious look on his face. So you're rebattling him. Well, not rebattling, but battling him for the first time. I'm guessing, yep, he has Eevee. So the Pokemon that you didn't get from, well, not having Let's Go Eevee. Yeah, so we see a little bit more of the battle screen. And he has a bunch of issues <laughs> and such. So yeah, that's a pretty good animation. It's not bad. I like the details in the Pokemon. If you let me go back a little bit so we can look at Pikachu. Just a little bit too far. Not far enough. Okay. So Let's get to Pikachu. Now, look at the details of Pikachu. You can see, like, it's not like typical games where the patterns on everything is just absolutely perfect. You can see that there are some deviations in his patterns. And this is a boy. In Pikachu's patterns, they're not all just perfect and such. It's like real life where no animal's patterns are perfect. Well, I'm sure there are some animals whose patterns are perfect, like those dogs that have hearts heart patterns but it's pretty cool that it's not just like a perfect oval or stretched out oval or anything and you see like the little hair details which I like I don't think these graphics are that bad okay he's off and I don't know what you want I wish I could read Japanese. I've been trying to learn Japanese lately, but I've been having a hard time finding time to learn it. Okay, so she's going to teach us about, you know, the Pokemon interactions and such. I wonder if this is only with Pikachu, though. <laughs> uh, Pikachu doesn't like being pet on its head. Or maybe that's, I don't know, that's kind of weird. Likes being scratched, not pet. That's kind of what it is. That's so cool. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't like the little feature of uh, interacting with your Pokemon like that, with scratching them and such, but I kind of liked it in Sun and Moon. I didn't like how long the load times were, but this one seemed like the load times were a lot faster. So I'm okay with that. I like that feature. It makes me feel like I'm bonding with my Pokemon a little bit more. So, did that look a little bit like 60 FPS? Hold on. That looked 
a little bit like 60 frames per second. So yeah, he's playing with the Pokeball Plus. Yeah, it looks like 60 frames per second. I could be wrong. I don't even know if this video records in that. Yeah, it does. Huh. Interesting. So it looks like the screen capture is only in 30, but the actual like video capture from outside the screen was in 60. So I think this game is going to be 60 frames per second dot, which is interesting. I think most Pokemon games were 60 frames per second anyways. Except for Sun and Moon. God, those frame rates will get so low. So you can catch another Pikachu if you want. Yeah, that's definitely 60 frames per second. Oh, overthrew it. Okay, so you can overthrow it. You can completely whiff it. Okay. Interesting. That's going to suck for people with a Master Ball, because if you completely whiff a Master Ball, that's going to drum up some feelings, man. That's going to hurt. I don't think you can get that Master Ball back. Alright, so the gym. We've already kind of seen what the gyms are like in the previous video. See the requirement, fight Brock. Yeah, these guys are little cheers. So we get to see some double kick. Oh, then Onyx. Okay, is there anything else? Looks like that's about it. Hmm. So I'll make another video following up on this because I feel like this video has already been long enough. Oh, snaps, that's a rock. <laughs> I feel like this video has already been long enough. So I'll make another video following up on everything, on my thoughts on Pokemon Let's Go so far. But for now, this seems really interesting. You know, we get to see some more Pokemon that's following us. In the terms of Venusaur, uh, let's see, Electrode, Onyx, well, Riding Onyx, Caterpie, and Golem. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Tell me what you think about all of this information down below. And tell me what you think about the Rebelling Trainers thing again, because I personally love that. They're bringing that back. I really do. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and Pokemon news, as well as some mobile games. I'll be playing games like Fake Grand Order, Bleach Brave, Souls, um, and I can't remember what the other game is called. Uh, Star Ocean Anamnesis and Memoria Freeze. It's a new game that I've been checking out, all in Fire Emblem Heroes. So if you like that kind of content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll definitely try to get out videos whenever I can, whenever I have the free time. And I'll catch you in the next video.